likes the snow? Interesting. Why do you like the snow? It's a, it's a question, by the way. And she's going, oh, no, he's talking to me already. Please, God. Oh, hello, I'm just going to come up here. Hello, your name is? My name is Tina. 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 And you, where are you from, Tina? I'm from Finland. Hence, I like snow. I meant the company, but never mind. <laughs> Finland. That's why you like the snow. Okay, I'm excellent. Booper. Okay, Booper. Yeah. Welcome, welcome, Tina. Um, who doesn't like the snow? Yeah. We've more on the way, haven't we, today? Have we? Good. Right. Whether you have... 30 minutes, 3 days, 3 months, or 3 years, people will remember 3 things. Would you agree? That's part of the start, really. So today, this is about presentation mastery, I'm just going to give you 3 things, because you're only going to remember 3. <laughs> so to help you remember that, if you remember this catchphrase, snow, bloody snow. But it also stands for stories Belief and state. What does it stand for? That's the only three things you need to remember this morning to take you to the next level. How many people use PowerPoint? Keep your hands up if you think it's absolutely brilliant and it's the best way. Yeah. What's going on? What's going on? So we know PowerPoint doesn't work. Now I'm going to rephrase that because this is being filmed. Bill Gates, please don't sue. I'm not saying PowerPoint's a bad thing. But most people, and be honest, you might be one of them. Most people don't use PowerPoint, do they? What most people do is abuse PowerPoint. And how most people use PowerPoint is to remember... What? What are they going to say? And you get those ones that read it back to you, don't you? you know? And we've heard the phrase, death by PowerPoint. <clears throat> I think a judicious, judicious, that's easy for me to say, um, a better use of slides will be to support your argument. In other words, you don't need them. They're not there for you, they're for the audience. So a real little check will be, are they for me or for the audience? Anybody got an iPod? I guess to be very good. I suppose I should go MP3 player. Mine's a bit out of date now. I must get one of those there iPhones, right? Um, so this is mine. I don't know how good your eyesight is, Simon. Can you see how many songs are on there? 20,000. 20, 20,000 songs. That's pretty good, isn't it? It's quite good when you're training, right? But there's a lot of crap on there, I've got to tell you something. A lot of it's my kids' stuff, rap, all sorts of stuff, right? Because when I got it, because you could get 20,000 songs on it and more, I put everything on it. That's how most people use PowerPoint, isn't it? At the press of a button, do do do, <laughs> I'll have another million, right? <clears throat> so we know PowerPoint doesn't work in the way most people use it. Um, and to prove that, here's how most people use it. They read it to you. What do people, in this tone of voice, what do people recall from PowerPoint? Australian professor John Sweller has been doing a lot of research in the area of membrane. And you've probably read all this by now, right? Oh, and then they think, I know what I can do to make this slide. By the way, this is my attempt to make the most boring slide in the world, but I could have probably made it even worse. But then the, what they think they'll do is they go, I'll tell you what, I'll make this slide even better. Let's have some really original piece of clip hat. <laughs> clip hat. Clip hat's good, isn't it? Oh, I've got some. Nobody will use this. That man with an exclamation mark over his head, that's a good one. I like that, right? Pretty good. <clears throat> so the number one alternative, I would suggest, or one of the alternatives to death by PowerPoint is to become a magnificent teller of your own stories. That's the number one alternative. If you model, if you stop and think about one of your favourite communicators, it might be... Might be a politician. You'll notice that they're all brilliant storytellers. The best kind of stories are your own, because nobody else can tell them. Also, it's brilliant for that memory thing. A lot of people think my big challenge is I can't remember stuff. That's why I need the PowerPoint. The great thing with stories is, even on the fly, you only have to kind of relive it in your head and you can kind of say what you see. So the real kind of great get out of jail bit if you haven't got a lot of time. You know when somebody says, forgot to tell you, Simon, but there's a presentation in 10 minutes and you're on. You know, the first place I would go is, what great story could I use? Stories are great because they make personal contact. They allow you as leaders, if you're leaders in the business, to take the mask off and make contact as a person. Whereas what PowerPoint tends to do is put you behind here and it becomes a barrier. 